Hey everyone, welcome back. Episode 14 now of Learning Motion Control with PLCs. If you watched all the other videos, then you're probably wondering by now uh, when we're going to control this 3D printer. And unfortunately I have to tell you the answer is not anytime soon. Uh, I didn't really have time budgeted for this series to go into that level of control. But also I wanted to show this ecosystem and how you control motors when they're just part of an automation machine specifically. So once you get into coordinated motion and things that are used in uh, you know, NC machines like uh, a CNC mill, a water jet, plasma cutter, uh, NC lathes, 3D printers, that sort of thing, once you get into that, you're in a little bit different of a, a, an entirely different realm of controls. And the system's capable of doing that, but you can't really get into that stuff unless you really understand the basics of point-to-point of -point motion. So I wanted to talk for just a minute about how the licensing works and how you kind of escalate into these different control types. So that if you do want to run something and, you know, if you want to make your own CNC machine or you have some other NC controls in your facility, that point to point motion can't handle, then I wanted to show you sort of what direction to take uh, if you're going to go that direction. And keep in mind that it's it's not a bad idea to get away with the, the simplest thing that you can. So if you can get away with a single axis, don't put two in, of course. Um, if you can get away with just point to point motion, don't bother with interpolated motion and adding G code in if you can just add a single axis to your to your project. So that's what I really wanted to show with point-to-point -point motion uh, because before I sort of got into this world I didn't really understand where that fit into most automation. A lot of things if you're just shifting a part over or you're you know there, there's a lot of single axis motion I'll say that and it ties in with regular you know standard hard automation um, with just valves and cylinders and things like that and you can just add an, an, an axis and be in great shape so Having covered that now, I think we're ready to dive in a little deeper and talk about NC Interpolated and TwinCat CNC. So those are the two next license levels that you can purchase after peer, uh, point to point, which is P to P. Okay, if we take a look at our system here and we go to license, you'll see that right now we're using TwinCat 3 PLC. So there's a few different levels of licenses here. You can actually get TC3 IO for completely free. So if you just want to run I.O. and you don't have an actual PLC runtime, you can get the I.O. in the ADS library that lives on top of that. So if you just have a PLC, or sorry, a PC, and you want to run some EtherCAD I.O. out of that, and you want to purchase that EtherCAD I.O., you can run that from something like .NET or Java or something to that effect over ADS for completely free. Um, I think what they're banking on there is that most people don't want to really do that very often they're usually going to get into a PLC runtime so they license this product here TC1200 and the way they license it I, we may have talked about on the first series but it has to do with the performance level of the hardware that you have so you'll end up with a, uh, a performance class here so I'm a performance level 40 on this uh, CX5000 series that we we borrowed from Beckoff and a normal PC will be a 90 so you end up paying a little bit more if you use uh, a regular PC than if you use their hardware but you know you gotta factor that into your project so if you need a uh, point to point here so NC stands for numeric control we already went over that PTP is point to point motion so the difference between point to point and interpolated motion let's talk about that very briefly if you have a system like this say this is a, a piece of plywood and we need to uh, drop some some glue on it something like in a path like that um, if the path that it actually takes is critical then you need coordinated motion because you're gonna have to run in X and in Y all uh, to follow this exact path but if you just need to come here and do a thing real quick and then come over to here and do a thing real quick then you should be good so if you picture that uh, a point here we need to interact with, a point here we need to interact with in blue. Uh, red would be a, here let's use a line tool. Where is the line tool? There he is. So we'll run a red. So this would be a um, an interpolated path if you wanted to uh, coordinate those two axes together and make a complete linear path. If you use point to point 
that path would actually look, let's go green here, more like this because it would both of these would go at the same speed I mean you can fudge it a little bit but they're not gonna be on this coordinated linear path so if all that matters is that you get there in the right amount of time then point to point will do the job for you but if you need to this is a top-down view by the way um, of, a, of a gantry system so if you need to actually follow the path you need interpolated motion if you don't care about following the path uh, and you just need to get an axis to an XYZ point then you know we could turn this on its side and do the same thing in Z as well so like if that was a Z move dot 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 we get there or do we need to make it completely straight so hopefully I didn't confuse that too much uh, that's the difference between interpolated and coordinated motion is how tightly can you couple those and how does the, tra the trajectory generator keep those two uh, systems in line okay so once you upgrade and decide you need NCI uh, it gets a little bit more expensive not too bad uh, but you do need the other you know you still need NC P to P and stuff like that so here it allow you to add another channel here an NC channel for interpolation or you can even do some kinematics uh, for you know if you wanted to do a Delta robot or um, Scara robot or anything like that there's some built-in kinematics that you can purchase from them uh, so you'd end up with your channel and then at this point we're talking to this system in g-code which is what you know 3d printer CNC machines all that uh, use and if you want to know a lot more about g-code I've got other videos on g-code but there's tons of information out there for it so this uses relatively standard g-code but you can also add your own M codes your own parameters and things like that so what you'll end up with is a PLC program that can load g-code files and execute them at will or you can load g-code from a string array in PLC memory it's it's kinda up to you what you want to do so if you think of a factory where you walk up and put in a USB stick and you load g-code it's like that but we can also do that where a part comes in and it reads a barcode and we load the g-code for that part and we process that part uh, on that mill and then the PLC that's controlling everything including closing the loop on the servo axes can feed that part out onto the conveyor down to the next machine and it can run the next machine too for that matter uh, if you got enough horsepower on the PC or on the, the PLC rather same same difference anyway right uh, so what happens um, when you really want a hardcore CNC machine with a UI and everything you can actually upgrade to yet another package called uh, TwinCat CNC and there is another option on there called uh, 5240 the transformation library where they have 70 different kinematic models and you can actually have them write them their own and all that so what Beckoff's doing here is they have purchased this CNC uh, I, I don't know the full story but they have essentially it seems like they've purchased the CNC uh, kernel that's separate from the TwinCat kernel but they do interact and there's these complex um, block diagrams on how they interact and things like that but CNC is another level and so I found it took a little while to try to track down really what the differences are but I found this webinar from Beckoff and this slide right here kinda says everything you you pretty much wanna run NC uh, NCI rather because it's a lot cheaper than CNC and it's kind of a realm closer to what you know most people are used to I guess you'd say so PLC program we still have that PLC runtime uh, DIN 66025 is g-code essentially um, it's the standard that dictates g-code with common you know g01 g0 all those things are built in then you add your own extensions to it so this is the key though here is max number of axes is three path axes and then five auxiliaries so you have a max of three coordinated axes here and then you jump over to CNC and you can coordinate 32 axes and six spindles so if you're looking at one of those systems that's like a lathe with live tooling on both sides and um, it just ridiculous amount of spindles that you're coordinating like once you get into the that level of machine tool you are definitely into the CNC it's a higher performance system um, although this guy can run more axes in general it's when you get into the coordination so that's where the CNC really shines here um, max number of independent channels 31 
So those would be like a channel would be like a robot. So a del you could have 31 delta robots, three axes each, and that would only get you a third of the way to the maximum number of, of things you could run. Now you'd need a, probably a decent amount of horsepower, but it wouldn't surprise me if like an i7 quad core could just run this whole system. Um, anyway, get with Beck off if you have an application anywhere near like any of this. I just wanted to touch on it a little bit. You have all these you know, linear and circular and helical interpolation. So you can code those right in and it handles all the trajectory gem, uh, generation, um, jerk limiting here. And then this guy's got some extra stuff, look ahead, spline interpolation, all sorts of other stuff. So depending on your application, CNC may fit the bill if it's like a really traditional uh, milling machining kind of thing, or you need a really high performance system. But of course, you can just put in a second PLC and put whatever you want on the other one and, and have them talk over EtherCAD or ADS or whatever you want. So uh, anyway, just wanted to talk a little bit about the options and kind of where you take it from from where we left off, which was you know, doing our, our little motion and uh, you know running back and forth with this scope view here. We, we showed the uh, servo motion and stuff like that. So uh, Anyway, if you have questions, probably should direct those to back off. If you have a uh, thing, we're talking probably the licenses for that start around uh, just a wild guess, maybe three to four thousand bucks for a license. So this isn't hobby grade stuff, and it does take some training to get into. And uh, but they'll help you out. So uh, anyway, that's uh, the end of this episode, and pretty soon we're gonna wrap this series up. We got just a few more things to talk about. I was gonna do a little bonus video next. Uh, in a wrap up and that's it so thanks for joining me and uh, I'll see you in the next one